guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I'm gonna be doing a review, man, it's been a while, on the new LEGO Spider-Man Homecoming Beware the Vulture set. And the set over for this one is 76083. Recommended ages are 7 through 14, and it has a piece count of 375, while the price point is $39.99. And I'm sure you're probably wondering, how did I get this set? Where is everybody getting them from? Go to Barnes & Noble. They've been putting them out early. It's great. So, this set is pretty much, if you ask me, like the main set that I think everyone wants to go for, and I think a lot of you can agree that the ATM heist battle isn't even all that exciting, and so I might not even review it, but this set has it all. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so our new and improved Spider-Man that has been updated since the Civil War variant for Homecoming, and basically what happened last year was Civil War, while LEGO was able to give us an accurate head and an accurate pair of legs, unfortunately, it was based off the prototype suit that really wasn't ultimately utilized in Civil War, so LEGO ended up with an inaccurate torso, an inaccurate emblem on both sides, and also an inaccurate pair of arms. Thankfully, it's been a while, and they have since updated it to completely completely fix those design errors and we now have a much more complete uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man minifigure. And just to get them out of the way really quick, he does have a pair of Power Blast pieces and if you haven't seen these in action, basically the way they work, you just go ahead and uh, press them against the arm and then they fire. And it's shocking and it's it just an absolutely incredible playability feature. So that's a thing. Anyway, to give you some shots and just some comparison shots of how the uh, torso, you know, looks from the Civil War variant on the left to the Homecoming variant on the right, you can see LEGO not only changed the design of the emblem, but they changed pretty much the entirety of the torso for the most part. A lot of changes there uh, with the belt and also the black surrounding the emblem, like those uh, black stripes. And then also on the arms, you can see LEGO pretty much completely reworked uh, the black sections there as as well totally moving them around and uh, fixing the design as mentioned and then here we go with the back and you can see Lego totally uh, fix the emblem on the back of the torso as well featuring a little bit of detail in the center which my custom didn't actually have um, and then you also do have uh, some more webbing toward the bottom there and some black sections that were not present on the original variant and also a, bl a black section on uh, the top so basically Lego improved all the uh, black sections on Spidey they added the webbing canisters on the front of the torso and uh, they updated the main emblem and made for a much more complete Tom Holland Spider-Man figure in terms of the design and then again the head is completely the same carried over from the Civil War variant and then as are the uh, the pair of legs that he has which uh, are a pair of uh, double molded dark blue legs and have some uh, red boots and a little bit of printing on the front of each and also on the thigh area which does extend down uh, past the knees it is an absolutely amazing Spider-Man figure and to be completely honest I don't really see how it gets much better than this. Next up, the Iron Man Mark 47 suit is pretty much a carbon copy of the 46, which is totally understandable. Really the only difference here, are obviously the chrome sections and then the new pair of legs. That is a completely new design. And so this is super cool. Really the only like dis difference with the design besides the chrome sections on the torso are that there are like a couple lines missing beneath the arc reactor. Other than that, same design, just with the chrome sections added in. And then again, the legs are completely new and they look fantastic. Fantastic uh, as well. So other than that, standard Iron Man helmet, and of course you have the, the face mask that flips up, which is kind of peculiar this time around because there's no Tony inside, which leads me to believe that maybe he's not going to be present inside of his suit for one of the sequences, or this was just based off concept art, and uh, Lego themselves didn't even know. Either way, it's definitely different. And again, you trans blue head to remove the helmet. Of course, the helmet's trying to come with the head, but there you go, you can see it's definitely a trans blue head for whatever reason. And then if we take a look at uh, the back of the torso, you can see all that chrome extending onto his back as well. And again, it's pretty much just the Mark 46 design with different sections uh, recolored to be that chrome. And uh, other than that, that's really it for the 47 suit. He's got the standard set of, uh, you know, trans light blue cylinder and studs for his repulsors in case you might have thought that he wouldn't and other than that uh yeah mark 47 man pretty great our third figure the vulture himself mr adrian tombs or just mr keaton 
let me preface this segment by saying I realize this figure is passable for the most part and for a lot of you. And I think that's great. That is awesome. I'm glad that you guys can appreciate this figure. It's just me being the minifigure customizer. There are a few things here that I want to point out that I think where this figure lacks. And so I think the design is great on the front of the helmet and on the torso. It's just the design on the front of the helmet was printed onto a dark green invincible Iron Man helmet, which is by no means accurate and a little odd. I do think LEGO should have made a new piece for Vulture's helmet. I think it would have looked fantastic, similar to what they did with Yellow Jacket back in 2015. That was amazing, and I just, this is not. Um, and I realize that might not be a too big of a deal for a lot of you. And again, that's great. Um, but yes, yeah, so the design is fantastic. I just wish it wasn't printed onto a dark green Iron Man helmet. And then for whatever reason, I guess just to save on design work or cost, Lego did include the vulture head from the comics, which is I mean, that's fine. This likeness isn't really too off. I think that this actually does work. It's just uh, you have like the white above the eyebrows. And, and so that's kind of awkward because obviously that's Michael Keaton doesn't have white above his eyebrows. And so I'm probably going to end up having to repaint my own face for when I make a custom figure. Um, but then the torso is unfortunately printed onto a black body. And again, I don't know if this was based off concept art or not. Of, I mean, of course it was, um, but it, it I think a dark brown torso was the obvious choice. Uh, Vulture's jacket in the film is dark brown, but for whatever reason it's printed onto black. And that might not bother you. Again, I mean, it really doesn't bother me, to be completely honest. It's more of a nitpick, but something I wanted to point out. Uh, the, again, the design is fantastic on the front, not entirely 100% accurate, which is what leads me to believe this was definitely based off, uh, you know, heavily based off some concept art. And then on the back, we do have like the fur and the rest of the design extending, which is great. Lego didn't have to do that because Vulture does, of course, attach to his big uh, winged apparatus and then I think some leg printing would have been great on this pair of dark green legs but Lego seems to have passed unfortunately anyway removing the helmet and the head real quick just to give you a look at the piece that is used to attach Vulture to his wings it's basically that same 2x2 two two clear piece that you've seen on various minifigures at this point you literally just stick them onto a plate and that's how Vulture attaches to his wings which you'll see in a little bit um, but yeah it's kind of disappointing for me but overall could have been worse and finally oh man the super top secret confidential shocker minifigure that lego had to censor from the box art at public events it is so so surprising look at how incredible of a minifigure this is honestly it's just a new face and a new pair of printed arms um but i guess marvel might have uh, wanted lego to keep this guy under wraps or something even though he's in the trailers so that's a thing uh, and this was actually the first time where I pulled the minifigure out of the bag and it was the first time I got a look at him because of Lego censoring him from the box art. So that was definitely a new experience for me. But yeah, he's got a fully printed face, totally new design to match the likeness of the actor portraying Shocker. And then we'll just, uh, let's talk about the gauntlets here for a second. If you've seen the trailers for Homecoming, you would know that Shocker is using a modified, modified versions of uh, Crossbones same gauntlets. And um, yeah. I try to bring up the whole concept art thing, Lego uh, designing their sets for movies based off concept art like a really long time in advance. So maybe Shocker's Gauntlets looked a little closer to this based on whatever Lego was looking at. But uh, I think if Lego wanted to make their Crossbones figure last year even worse, this would have been it. So. Let's take them off his hands for just a little bit because we've got a pretty decent torso print for his jacket here and then that design does extend onto his back but obviously the best part of the minifigure I think is this pair of printed arms the pattern that Lego printed onto this arm and onto this one they're they're fantastic I think it's it's great that Lego did implement this onto the minifigure and I guess we had to uh, sacrifice a new face for the main villain of the movie and some leg printing to get a decent shocker figure because I think the uh, best of the printing clearly went to him instead of vultures so uh, yeah other than that that is it for all the minifigures included and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the actual set all right, so we're starting off with Vulture's wings first, obviously, and moving the truck along with the minifigures aside temporarily to talk about these wings. This is, honestly, 
a lot better the more that I've, you know, the longer that I've had uh, to think about the design of these wings since the analysis video I did a few months ago, the more that I've become, you know, just a lot more fond of this design despite a couple nitpicky things. And so I think the size of the wings is actually pretty great. I think the wingspan is fairly accurate. It's just more so these panels on the front and the width of these sections because Vulture's wings aren't really that wide in the middle here um, and you know they, they they don't have giant light gray panels it's a lot more detailed even more detailed than Falcon's wings for instance and so I don't understand what this is about here I don't know if this came from concept art or what um, but I think this is really what threw me off the first time around when I saw the very first images of this set but other than that these wings are fairly well designed they're fairly well articulated and they have everything that you would expect even playability in the form of a couple stud shooters that do have the purple studs, the trans purple studs, to represent the Jatari tech that Vulture is using. And if you don't know how stud shooters work, before he falls over from my makeshift stand that is not included with the set, by the way, you can just go ahead and push down the great levers and your purple Jatari studs go flying completely off the studio and into the abyss of Lego boxes, so I'll never find that again. Um, but what I really do like are these tips here, and I mean... It would be cool to see what this would look like if LEGO was able to work like black versions of these uh, katana pieces in. Um, but I could also understand how that would sort of take away from the brick built look of everything. So I get that. Um, and it's really not that bad now that I have it here in person. And of course, all four of these tips on each wing are articulated by use of a basic hinge piece. And I'm not going to adjust every single one of them just to prove that because I'm OCD and these wings take a little bit to get perfect. Um, the articulation with the wings is, is really great. I mean, you have the... Uh, you have a couple of hinges for other, like that come from the base of the of the uh, whole apparatus from the middle and they can be uh, adjusted inward or outward and then the main turbine sections which don't actually have turbines are on a uh, pair of just a couple basic ball joints and so if you fold these out a little bit further that'll also allow you to fold the wings themselves out just a little bit more so that's the stopping point for folding them outwards and then inwards they go just about that far with uh, Vulture himself attached and so you have a lot of articulation here you have a lot of range for the articulation and I think it's really great for a you know for brick built vulture wings I don't really see it getting too much better than this aside from these panels while the pieces themselves are cool I just think any other number of pieces here and then just making these a little bit thinner would be a hell of a lot better um, but at the same time you also need to have at least four of these uh, these uh, tips on the edge of each wing so it's kind of a difficult design but I really think it works despite these pieces here and aside from that there really isn't a whole lot else to cover other than you have a couple stickers on uh, both of these slopes on the very back of it and other than that that pretty much covers Vulture's wings definitely nowhere near as uh, as bad as I uh, made them out to be in that analysis video I did a few months back these are actually pretty cool even though the minifigure, not so much. Okay, so the truck is actually also a pretty great design. You have not only a super solid build, but it's packed with playability features, uh, stickers, and Easter eggs for the film. And just to cover them first, because the stickers are super noticeable, uh, we've got stickers all over the side of this thing. On the right here, just a lot of gashes and scratch marks. On the top, a bit of webbing there. On the front windshield, the entire hood is smashed in and so that comes in in the form of a sticker as well totally warped and really really well done then the license plate reading ACJR10 on the right side of the vehicle did I say this was the left or right I don't remember but this side is the right side and you can see even more gashes and then more webbing on the back left corner of this side and then on the back we have how's my driving oh boy it's crossed out shocking ha 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 I'm gonna go burn the set now. Uh, but taking the roof off along with the windshield, you can see, I guess the mirror's coming too. We'll put that back on. You can see Shocker's got plenty of room inside, a two by four available space behind that steering wheel. So we can just go ahead and uh, see him right in the middle there and everything is fantastic. And then we just go ahead and put the windshield back in place along with the roof and he's ready to go. So there is that. Now the entire main playability function of this build is that the entire back opens up in two halves and you can see the hinges on both sides there and there. And basically, just pull them down, and inside we've got more gadgets for Shocker. We've got a Chitauri minigun. Just a lot going on in here. And so covering Shocker's gadgets first and foremost, we've got... Um, 
I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what these are. I'm guessing they're things that the Tinkerer maybe makes for the Shocker. Um, I probably put that on wrong, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen these in the trailers myself. Maybe you guys know exactly what they are and you're gonna hate me for uh, for not. There's that. <laughs> anyway, the uh, Chitari minigun is just a uh, six shooting stud shooter uh, with the six studs wrapping around the whole thing. And so you've probably seen one of these before. And of course it is, you know, it is Chitari tech because you have all the trans purple studs. Lego makes that very apparent in the Spider-Man Homecoming set and you just go ahead and turn the wheel on the back and all six studs fire and I'm going to lose half of these forever so uh, here we go, rest in peace. One, two, three, four, five, six, hey, oh, oh, no, two went off, they're gone. Anyway, folding that down, which is just basically, it's the whole thing is just connected to a basic Technic arm inside there. You can see on it we have the logo for the DODC, which is the Department of Damage Control that Vulture is a part of and how he gets all his Chitari tech and all that stuff in the movie. And then if we remove these crates, which are just kind of kind of just floating around in there, you can see these crates do also have the same DODC logo, which is super cool, and uh, those are in the form of stickers, but that uh, make for a really great design on both of these. And if we just remove the hatches really quick the two by four reddish brown tiles inside in this one we've got nothing and then in this one we've got a uh, trans purple cone with a uh, stud on the bottom I'm guessing that's a missile or a weapon of some kind that might be a spoiler hopefully not Lego bases these off concept art right so nothing can be spoilers anyway crates the truck it's pretty great. Now the back does have one kind of like semi f featured, but not really. Lego has this option where you can go ahead and remove the ramp, even though I, uh, that, that you know that's that's a thing. You can remove that, and then you can take the webbing and clip that on instead. And then maybe take Spidey and put him in sort of a decent position that kind of makes it look like he's gliding on the back. He's got his webbing and he's just kind of hanging on. You know, he's using it as a way, as a means to board the truck or whatever. It's a thing. It's cool. This set is fully functional in every way with the design, with the truck's playability, with Vulture's wing articulation. It's all there in this set. I think is absolutely worth the 40 bucks, despite the small nitpicky things I pointed out on the Vulture's wings and despite the small issues that I have with the figure itself of Vulture. The set itself overall is, I think is worth it, but clearly the roof does not agree. Get back! On the truck that would be great seriously thank you um this set is is just that it's worth the 40 bucks i think so anyway let me know what you think down in the comments if you agree disagree that's it let's go ahead and take a look at the box instruction manual extra pieces and the comic book not in that order and we'll wrap up this video all right, so as usual, the box is definitely a box, and you can see it depicts all of them in a massive pursuit of uh, this truck in a chase sequence that definitely won't happen in the movie, or at least, you know, not with all these characters present. Anyway, all four minifigures featured here in the bottom left corner. Spider-Man Homecoming logo in the bottom right. Spidey himself in the top right. The actual size reference being sported by Spidey himself as well. All four minifigures featured in the set. And then on the back of the box, we have all the features included with the set that I totally just showed you, uh, except for this one with the uh, additional you know playability function you have with the webbing and you also could have probably used these uh freaking what are they, the power blast pieces which would have been great um, but I, I forgot to mention it, so I'm mentioning it now. Anyway, there's that, and then more shots of all the features of the set and everything it can do. Um, and then we also have, uh, again, the graphic for the Power Blast I just kind of pointed to, and then the comic book included, Build Something Super, lego.com slash Marvel Superhero, Spider-Man Homecoming. You didn't know, instruction manuals help you build the set. There's two of them, for whatever reason, but this one comes in at a total of 32 pages with an entire advertisement for all of the Thor Ragnarok Ragnarok sets, or at least both of them. Isn't there like three? Or is this it? I think it's just these two. Is it okay to post pictures of these now, Lego? Or are you going to still take videos down? Probably not. They'll still send issue strikes. Um, anyway, second book is the truck. I think. Yeah, it's the truck. And then you can see we also do have an advertisement for lego.com slash Marvel Superheroes and an entire advertisement for a Lego City that is meant for kids to see so that they can hope that one day they'll be able to build a Lego City uh, just like that in the photo like I was when I saw this as a kid and then I was like, oh, well, that's a lot of money. So that dream died along with this segment. <laughs> it's got dark. Dude, I don't know which side is the front cover 
We have two MCU movies and one comic book. Lego's finally making an effort to save paper, just not with their instruction manuals. But here's the beginning of this section. I'm not personally going to really look at these. You can pause at this during this segment because it's segments like these that uh, make people go down in the comments and telling my reviews are too long. Um, but there's the end of that. It looks like they stopped Vulture and recovered the Tatari tech. Yay! And that's the ending of the Thor version of the Thor comic. So let's let's not spoil things. But yeah, here's the front cover for Thor Ragnarok. Pretty cool. The arena on Sakaar. And then we have uh, some spoilers. It looks like uh, Hulk comes out. And then, oh man, Valkyrie like attacks but you think that she's working with the Grand Master so there's something happening here and then Hella shows up and uh yeah but then they stop Hella with the power of power blasts and glowing eyes that's it by the way oh man the extra pieces are shocking but in all seriousness the coolest thing here is this uh power blast piece other than that studs most of which i've already used throughout the review so i don't know how accurate this segment is um but you do get extra trans purple studs but i i just don't know how many anymore so yeah anyway that is it for this review thank you for sticking around for the whole thing i really appreciate it and finally we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up forget the flying monster guy there are people who handle this sort of thing like us oh uh Okay. Yeah, just make sure you're ready for Thanos, kid. Um, all right. Wait, who's Thanos? Okay, there you go. That is it for what will probably be my only Spider-Man Homecoming set review. And that's just because, I mean, let's be honest, the ATM Heist battle, while the Avengers mask and the Chitauri tech are cool, it's not really overly exciting of a set, and so I don't really think it warrants a review, even though I did pick it up for myself. But if you enjoyed this review on this set, the better of the two, then be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion down in the comments. Anything you agree with, disagree with, you definitely don't have to agree with me. Let me know what you think of the set and what I think about it down in the comments. That is why I do these reviews to help you guys better make a decision as whether or not you think this set is worth picking up. And despite the minor flaws that I did point out with Vulture's wings and Shocker's gloves and things like that, it's still a really great set. I think it's worth the 40 bucks, like I said. And on that note, you can totally check out my Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram, all the links are down there like usual. And there I'm gonna be posting preview photos of my upcoming uh, Wonder Woman figure, potentially figures, my own custom Spider-Man homecoming figures. I'm making Spidey and his homemade suit, my own Vulture, and my own Mark 47, and you'll see all of that over on those long before you see it here, because uh, I can post them over there when I'm not done, and it's and it's great, but yeah. Then after that, I'm doing a couple figures for The Flash Season 3, too, and also just got the green light from my buddy Sonder that uh, Savitar is also happening. That season finale was pretty cool, wasn't it? Anyway, we're not even talking about the set anymore, so I'm gonna go hit up Barnes & Noble, and I'll catch you later. All right, bye-bye. Okay, there you go. That is it for my review on the... I'm officially making Spidey in his homemade costume, the Iron Man Mark 47 suit, and the Vulture. Are you making Chakra? Uh, no. Oh, why not? Because he's a side character and probably won't be in the movie for that long. Big Shocker! ...are pretty, pretty close. Okay.